Why continue that? Why continue to honour such processes and procedures when clearly these judges, lawyers, registrars, sheriffs, clerks and other officials of a system based on the laws of the Roman cult seem like they will never wake up, that they will never restore themselves to honour? Well, the simple answer is it has nothing to do with them. They are now irrelevant as they have abdicated their responsibilities and are walking shadows. It is for our benefit and for the redemption and restoration of the law that we do what we do. So I want to make that point clear. The, the giving of notice and the ecclesiastical deeds going to the registrars, people who are ignorant, completely ignorant of the big system, is not for the benefit of the parasite. It is for our benefit and the benefit of the restoration of the law. If there is no remedy at the same level that we are registered into the system, then the law is unlawful. Then their system is unlawful. And we have proof, and we will prove the dishonour of the system. And we will use that dishonour to collapse the system by their own rules. But what we do, we do for ourselves, to stand, to wake up, to be accountable, to help others wake up, to no longer be fearful, to no longer give energy to these people. And we do it because if we are to stand as a law, we must stand in honour and we must recognise due process. And that is exactly what we're doing. So I know it's frustrating. I know it's expensive. I know it's painful. But please, please understand that history requires us to do things properly. And if we are to convey, as we are doing in the deeds, your rights to you, your communities and your families to end the madness of thousands of years, then we must do things properly. Now, moving on to the ecclesiastical deed, the updated ecclesiastical deed, I'm now going to click back on the home page. I'm going to click on ecclesiastical deed poll the box and you will see down the right hand side a link that says EDP for court. I'm going to click on that. When I click on that I'll see a link that says Ecclesiastical Deed Poll for Court. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to open the page and we're going to have a look at the Ecclesiastical Deed for Court. I'm just going to have a quick drink first. Okay, so this is a deed poll for any court issues to be issued after you have served the registrar with your live born record and with the paperwork for the original ecclesiastical deed. So this now clears up the issue of how do you use a deed poll for court? How do you do your deed poll with the registrar? Now, for the benefit of those that are listening and for the benefit of the record, I'm going to read the deed poll through and explain the structures of it. So it still starts with per curiam divina, on behalf of the court of the divine, and the opening is the same as well. We, the divine immortal spirit, expressed in trust to the circumscribed living flesh known as Franco Collins, hereby give life and personality to this sacred irrevocable deed through our seal in blood and agreement to the conveyance and terms pronounced herein. Number one, we annex hereto in full our formal deed and notice to the title of the Roman official, so to the Registrar of Births, Deaths and Marriages of Victoria, including our live-born record as certificate of title from the Great Register and Public Record of One Heaven as proof of superior title and sacred record of event by Eucadia time against any other claimed title. While it is possible that our supremely sacred instruments may be dishonoured, it cannot be reasonably concluded by any competent forum that personal jurisdiction can be lawfully established by you 
until this contest of title is resolved. Now let me explain the logic of that first uh, item, that first article. When you think of jurisdiction, jurisdiction is central to the operation of the private courts, the private laws, of the private bar guilt. And jurisdiction dates back to the very beginning of Anglo-Saxon law and there are three parts to it. Personal, territorial and subject matter. If you want to understand how the three work, personal jurisdiction, the first thing they ask for is the name. <clears throat> what they're asking for is the property. When they ask for the property, then they ask for the res, the, uh, the location, the residence of the property. And then third, in subject matter, they seek an agreement from you to discuss and move forward in order to convey lawfully any property that comes from the court case. So personal, territorial, and subject matter are the three forms of jurisdiction that the court must perfect if it is going to move forward and there be no grounds to dispute at least the essential elements of the case. There may be procedures that they fail, but the lawfulness of hearing the case cannot be disputed. So at least some bonding, some monetization can take place. But if jurisdiction is imperfect, then there is a possibility that no money can be made from the case and in fact they can be penalised for unlawfully moving forward. So jurisdiction is essential. If you want some more information on what we mean by jurisdiction, please go and have a look under how to succeed at court and the new sections that have been added there, in particular, description on jurisdiction. So what we're saying in this first clause, this first uh, part of the deed is that because we have sent to the registrar our live-born record as a certificate of title and our deed, we are contesting the title. We are challenging their claim of ownership of the property. And until that claim is resolved, no competent forum, none, can claim clear personal jurisdiction. Now that should be enough to end any court matter. But remember we're dealing, unfortunately, in, in some cases with arrogant, with ignorant, with stupid people. So there is the possibility that they will think it's just a bluff and they will move forward. Remembering, if they move forward as a matter of law, as demurra, the concept of ceasing any action until a matter of law is resolved, they will, the court, certainly under a, a case of demurra and appeal, could find that the, the banner is thrown out immediately. And point two. Furthermore, we give formal notice that as we are divine duality, you may refer to us as divine immortal spirit, Diz, trust recipient number, or as you wish. Therefore, our primary location is heaven, while the location of our circumscribed sacred flesh vessel is wherever you choose to stand or wherever you request us to be, without constraint or coercion to resolve this matter. And I'll explain this firstly and then we'll go into the, to the remainder. The first part is extremely important. Now, a number of you have asked, even though there are frequently asked questions um, right throughout the sites, a number of you rightfully ask, uh, because of your concern, of the symbolism, the extreme symbolism that does appear in a number of places in terms of uh, documents, the Eye of Ra, the Keys of Heaven. These are symbols traditionally associated with the dark powers of B as opposed to any kind of remedy. And as I've explained to you, the covenant of one heaven is consumption. The covenant of one heaven is the restoration of the whole, the ending of the war in heaven, the resolving and unity, the reunification. And it is also very much about consumption, consuming those symbols and owning those symbols and making plain we represent all spirit, not some, not half. We represent all spirit so that if these flesh beings so arrogantly and stupidly 
choose to ignore, they ignore on the basis of the things that are all around their courts, the claims around their courts. Their gold bars with 6666 or 9999, depending on how you look at them. And their silver bars with 666 all over them. They are using this symbolism and have used this symbolism against us for centuries. Why? Because they want us to believe they're evil. They want us to believe that there is some supernatural power that they represent and that if we cross them, that supernatural power will come into our life and snatch our soul and hurt us. Well, they don't have that power. That power ceased to exist in the creation of the covenant. We represent all spirits. They represent none. We have consumed all their symbols. They have none. Please don't be distracted when someone says to you in an absurd manner, oh, because this symbol exists, therefore all is negative. I mean, that is the absurdity of lack of, of knowledge and, and ignorance. Please don't be distracted by that. But when it comes to this, it makes it clear. Divine immortal spirit, dis, trust recipient number, or as you wish, to them it is clear who and what we represent. So if they foolishly choose to move forward, then the black robes they're wearing are an abomination. They are crossing their own belief system. They are destroying their own temple and they're exposing themselves for what they truly are, mentally ill. And that's what we want. That's exactly what this moment in history is about. That by their own iniquity, stupidity, arrogance, they shall destroy themselves. Now, as far as location is concerned, you are a, du a duality. So your spirit is in heaven. It's not contained in your body, standing in front of you. Your spirit is in heaven. It's connected to your body, but it is not floating around. It's in heaven. Your location is in heaven. Your body is here in this dream. This is perfectly accurate and true. So unless these people, and let's move on, Thus, while it is possible you or some other agent may seek to ignore our lawful assertion of superior title, it cannot be reasonably concluded by any competent forum that territorial jurisdiction can be lawfully established by you unless before all heaven and earth you now claim supreme jurisdiction over all spiritual and temporal. Let them come forward and say, we are greater than the divine. We are are greater than any other force because no one in this system has ever done that. If people think the Pope has claimed themselves a God, he didn't. He merely claimed that he could be possessed by a supreme spirit. And the Catholic Church has only ever claimed itself to be an agent. I'm not defending the Catholic Church, I'm just making it clear that even at the level of the Jesuit uh, general or the Pope, they never claimed themselves to be um, greater than God. So if a judge wants to stupidly claim that they're greater than God in ignoring this, go right ahead. Let's get on the record that the Bar Society has lost the plot, that they are so far off the reservation that they, they, they do not represent any kind of law anymore. Let's get that on the record. Because the faster it's on the record, the faster we'll clean up this mess and the faster they'll be kicked out. But on the second alone... There is no way they can establish territorial jurisdiction. No way. Point three. While we have been forced by necessity under constraint to engage in commerce and law using certain property you claim, we give further notice that all acts in commerce and law we seek to engage a surety of our trust number, so on. Therefore, no consent may be implied or decided from any of our previous actions that may be reasonably concluded by any competent forum that you possess subject matter jurisdiction over us. In other words, we have done what we needed to do to survive. And we have done whatever we needed to do to survive up to this point, but now we're making it clear that nothing we've done can be used as a presumption that we agree that you have subject matter jurisdiction over us. Nothing. And because we make clear that this is what we want to do, if you still deny us, you can't use that denial or that force or that uh, terror or that fear or any of your tools of control 
to argue you have 